Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Sure. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is David. David comes to us from Andrew Armstrong of Fermenter Games, and Andrew describes David as a game about physics and enemies, a game about struggles and life, a game about David. At its core, David is a physics-based platforming boss fighter. Bit of a mouthful there. Uh, what is that? Well, probably best to show you as opposed to telling you. Uh, yeah, this is David. He's our hero. He is a little uh, box, yeah, surrounded by a halo and uh, being swarmed by a series of very small uh, circle orb things. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. So behind these doors lie the bosses of David. These bosses are bigger than us. They are faster than us. They are stronger than us. But we have one advantage that they do not. We are David. So David is blessed with a few augments, a few powers, a few advantages in his battle against these bosses. And uh, the first of which is this infinite jump. It's not a uh, double jump. It's not a triple jump. It is an infinite jump. It's not quite flight, but it's nearly there. It's almost, uh, shall we say, flapping? Hmm. <laughs> right, let's move on from that. David is also blessed with a weapon. If you click inside of his halo, he can charge up and then shoot out a swarm of technicolor bees. These bees will visit misery upon his opponents, and it is pretty much the only way you have to defeat most of the bosses in this game. So uh, yeah, let's jump right in. Let's take a look at it, kind of get you guys familiar with exactly what David is and why I think it's one of the most impressive mobile-to-PC games I've ever, ever seen. So we can choose our difficulty. We've got OK or Very. Uh, you will see these little uh, ticks, these little uh, hash marks, these gray squares. That denotes the amount of life you get. You can see you get many ticks of life on OK and but one on Very. So we're going to go to OK. And here's the first boss. This is the first boss battle. We need to defeat this series of triangles, which is, uh, well, he's pretty much set on our demise. So uh, let's try to hurt him. We do that with our, again, Technicolor Swarm. And our ability to evade. These are pretty much the two main weapons that David has at his disposal, and they're pretty much the two things you're going to be using to defeat most of the bosses of the game. You can see that there is a slowdown effect when I pull back my shot, which allows for some pretty cool moments like that. Now, ideally, we wouldn't be getting hit at all, but, you know, I'm talking and playing video games and making tons of excuses for why my play is poor. Uh, but that's it. We have defeated Greed, the first boss of David. Now, there's a lot, not a lot here, so I'm not going to show you very much. I will just point out a few things. If you take a look at these bosses, these doors which hold these bosses, you will see things which look very much like the Seven Deadly Sins. And, in fact, the large door which opens when you beat all of these levels on Very is, in fact, called... Sin. Your hero is also called David, and you have a weapon which is very much like a slingshot, and you use it to combat very large enemies, which you might say are Goliaths. Uh, yes, the religious symbolism is uh, right at the surface with this one, and I think that it's actually a really nice thing to see someone using the medium of video games to express their religious views. I think it is a great thing about video games that they are versatile, and that they can do that. And I'm going to try to not get distracted and make my point while also surviving this boss battle. Uh, I think it's a really beautiful thing, and I'm really glad that we're seeing games like this. We're seeing games that uh, are really expressing people's uh, deepest held beliefs and sharing uh, pieces of themselves. I mean, you don't just have to tell heartbreaking stories or heartwarming stories or spine-chilling stories inside of video games. You can also tell very personal tales about the things that color your worldview. And while I'm not exactly a Christian myself, I love seeing someone share their personal views and beliefs uh, in the video game format. It's showing me that this format's really, it's maturing and it's really coming into its own. Uh, much in the way that any other form of expression, whether it be film, uh, writing, or, uh, say, music or art, 
uh, has indeed done over the last, you know, thousands of years of human existence. So we're going to jump into the arena as we finish this video out. The arena is really cool. It, it holds a lot of the replay value of the game, I suppose. Uh, you can purchase upgrades. You will score points for defeating waves of enemies or individual enemies in waves. Uh, none of these enemies will be on the boss level, but they will be... Uh, yeah, they'll be difficult because they're going to be fast or they're going to shoot hard at you, shoot really fast projectiles. They're going to do things that will make your life miserable. So uh, just because you're not fighting boss doesn't mean that you're uh, in for an easy time here. So I have a few things unlocked here. I have some shields. I have some... Uh, oh, there we go. This little saw blade is great because it just kind of grinds up any enemy who comes near it, including this enemy who would try to shoot me with his little... Oh, no, don't like that at all who would try to shoot me with his fast-moving projectiles were I not protected by that shield. You're going to see a little bit of that right here as he tries to do me in. Uh, so we're getting a point each time we defeat a cluster, uh, basically. So these three little uh, diamonds that are shooting at me are a cluster, and as I defeat those diamonds, I will uh, score a point, and that point will uh, add up my score, power-ups will drop, so forth and so on. It's an arena uh, mode, but it really does add an interesting level of replayability to the game, and I really, really have enjoyed my time inside the arena. Uh, so there's really not a whole lot more to say about David. I would highly recommend this game. Uh, I have enjoyed my time playing David. It is available on the iOS, Windows, and Macintosh platform. Seems like it was probably developed for all of those platforms uh, kind of at once. So thought was put into how this game would perform on the PC, and it really shows. This is not one of these shitty uh, mobile uh, cash-in ports that just absolutely have no place uh, showing up on your computer or in your Steam library. Uh, this is a game that really plays well regardless of platform. And uh, let's grind these guys up right here. I love this power up. I just love it. Come on, come get it. There you go. A couple more. You got something else for me? Come on. Nothing. You got nothing. So again, David, highly recommended. I think Andrew has done a great job with this game. Uh, the music is nice, fits the mood. Uh, the visuals are wonderful, minimalist, and great. And uh, the content of the game, I think, is just is just it's it's great. It's really great to see someone uh, sharing a message of uh, you know what they consider to be an important uh, religious message in the form of a game. And I think even if you're not a Christian, you can uh, get some appreciation out of David, the story that it's trying to tell and what it's trying to offer here as it embodies the struggle of the biblical David in uh, game format here. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave. This has been David. I would highly encourage you to take a look at it. It is up on Greenlight for Vote right now. You can check it out at fermentergames.com slash David. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.